Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 75. Just trucking along here in the early part of 2020. Thank you very much for taking the time to tune in. I've got a few stories I'm going to talk about today. Hopefully you'll find them interesting and uh, let me get right to it. First story I wanted to talk about is kind of a bit of a correction from my last show where I talked about Petro Canada and the national network that they launched here in Canada, that that was the first of its kind, um, being totally national, connecting coast to coast. I was, in, and I mentioned that Tesla wasn't there yet. Well, they are. They actually completed their supercharger corridor in Canada, which does extend from Vancouver to Halifax, Nova Scotia. And they uh, completed that in the late part of December. And what that means is that you can go across the country and hit a whole whack of superchargers. In fact, 20 of those have version 3 superchargers as well uh, of availability, which can provide up to 250 kilowatts of charging power. Most of the sites have six supercharger columns and some have eight charging points as well. Now, Tessa is going to continue not only expanding in Canada, but also worldwide. They have, they've uh, mentioned a bunch of locations more in Germany that they want to install for supercharging. Also France, England, and Italy. And also they want to expand more into Eastern Europe as they're seeing the uptake for their vehicles occur. And so they're looking at Poland, they're looking at Ukraine, Russia, the Baltic States, Romania, and Bulgaria. But good to see that Tesla is continuing to expand. Now, CES is on over the last uh, week or so and continuing on. And there's all kinds of stuff coming from CES. So I'm not covering everything, but a couple of good announcements came out. One of them being Prologium is a company from Taiwan, a battery cell manufacturer. And they've announced and presented actually a solid state battery package for electric cars at CES. Also, they can deploy this for buses and two wheelers, uh, which, of course, is a big industry in a lot of different countries around the world. Now, they've already signed strategic cooperation agreements with several car manufacturers to test its what they call MAB, a solid state battery package for multi-axis bipolar plus, excuse me, that's what it stands for. And it basically, um, they improve the energy density of the solid state battery or SSB as so you'll hear some acronyms. Uh, the um, uh, nickel ma uh, magnes magnesium cobalt, if I've got that right, NMC-811 cathodes uh, or lithium uh, anodes they've eliminated to uh, to get the solid state offering now battery pack is much smaller only consists of about four to twelve cells which could save a lot of space and when you save space in a car in a vehicle design that allows you more options to do uh, to do more things with that design specifically you provide more interior room uh, for occupants so that is is a, is a significant benefit to having smaller battery packs and also in the same token, increasing battery efficiency. Um, they've increased that battery um, efficiency from between 29 and 57% compared to conventional battery packs. And that energy density as well is about 29 to 57, 56 and a half percent higher with their technology. You know, I've, I've, I, as I bring up on a lot of shows, it's great to see the continued research and development in battery technology occur. Now, staying with battery technology, another uh, announcement from CES, Mercedes. This one is really, really cool. I had to read it a couple of times to say, what, is this real? They've announced, uh, they presented their Vision uh, Avtor. It's an electrically powered concept car that, of course, is this really cool futuristic design and all that stuff you're seeing pictures of it, but it's got really cool visionary battery technology. And they're claiming that this 110 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, it's graphene based organic cell chemistry is what they use. And it's free of rare earths and metals. And what that means is because it's free of that is that it's um, compostable and completely, and that's a key word, completely recyclable. Um, in addition, it also gives the benefits of high energy density of about 1,200 watt hours per liter. You can figure that out to your uh, specifications. Uh, very, very fast charging capabilities um, that the pack can be charged full in less than 15 minutes. So they don't give us they don't give a, a throughput uh, uh, number, but certainly very fast. And of course, it's again safe uh, space saving. So because it's only 94 millimeters high in some areas of the pack and much more smaller, that again, you can give those benefits to car designers to provide more for occupants and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is 
this is you know R and D. This is kind of futuristic stuff, but it just goes to show where we're going again on battery packs. That there's so many different avenues and so much technology and and smart people, so many smart people that are out there that are looking to uh, make these things better and safer. Uh, and you know this, if this thing is is for real and takes off, this can really be a game changer because I know a lot of uh, I get comments, I get emails, I talk to people, and a lot of the feedback I hear is about. Um, people who are concerned about the carbon footprint of EVs, n knowing that uh, especially all electric EVs have zero emissions and they understand that. But a lot of people feel that, you know, mining the elements and mining those materials and minerals, even lithium uh, ion uh, from uh, uh, or, uh, from doing all that farming and mining that they do there, the, the energy that's used in building the batteries and the cars and the life cycle, and then, of course, the recycling and the destruction of these batteries as, as they'll start to propagate around the planet as we sell more EVs that hit the roads. That is a valid concern. However, there are, I will add that there are many wheel-to-well studies that show that even when you tackle all that, as long as you're driving in an, a region that has fairly clean energy production for power, i.e. it's not very coal dependent as an example, the benefits of EVs still outweigh all that. And, and in fact, fossil fuels are still um, deploying more greenhouse gases and using more carbon, more of the carbon footprint on the planet because you have to, you know, you have to pump the oil, you have to refine it, you have to ship it, transport it, uh, all this kind of deliver it. All this, there's, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of energy cases there. So it's not, not just the <laughs> batteries are the only thing that, that suffer that. It's not. So it's good to see something like this that if it's fully recyclable and, and there's a lot of elements that are compostable, my goodness, that turns the industry sideways. So keep an eye on Mercedes. That's pretty revolutionary stuff and really, really cool. I talked about the Fisker Ocean on the last show, I believe, and gave some specs for the last couple of shows. Well, uh, there's some more detail that has come out, again, I think in conjunction with CES, that they've uh, come out with some uh, details on pricing. The entry-level uh, Fisker Ocean starts at $37,499 USD. You can convert that to your own currency. And if you look at the up to $7,500 tax credit, you can get this thing down just under $30,000, $29,999. That's a pretty compelling story. Now we're starting to get into some price points that make sense. The company is, is aiming to actually make this affordable by offering a pretty comprehensive leasing program. And I believe I talked about this before, starting around $379 a month or 345 euros for the European market. So, um, they plan on producing more than one million, one million vehicles for both U.S., European, and Chinese markets between starting in 2022. So we're still a couple of years of uh, seeing these things at the road up to uh, 2027. So within a five-year period, uh, that's pretty aggressive. And I really hope they do that. They are taking orders. So you can put a deposit uh, on these cars. Uh, they're going to have up to 300-mile range, 483 kilometers, a battery pack size of 80 kilowatt hours. Um, and they'll be built in the U.S. Uh, I think that's pretty compelling. It's a nice-looking vehicle. Uh, I, I feel the quality is going to be there. Uh, well, I don't know how they're going to support this from an infrastructure as far as servicing and uh, dealer or, or warranty network. We'll have to wait and see what comes out there. But uh, good to see uh, this thing moving along. Now, the big news from CES, at least for me, <laughs> was Sony's announcement of their electric concept car called the Vision S. And I've got some pictures and footage going on as I talk. And it's it's a lovely looking machine, but I had to do a double take. Sony? For real? Really? Um, now, remember, it is a concept car. It's a, it's a fully electric concept sedan, and it's really meant to showcase all the technology um, that Sony and its con conglomerate of companies and offerings uh, for their strengths and, uh, you know, through their entertainment products to their cameras and sensors and all kinds of other stuff that they build. So it's kind of a platform for showing off a lot of the stuff they do and where they're going with those technologies. Um, you know, it has like 33 different sensors inside and outside the car, wide, multiple, multiple widescreen displays. So for your gamers that like two or three um, displays, this is going to be pretty cool. 360 degree audio, uh, always on connectivity and all of this other stuff. Integration with BlackBerry and Bosch. Uh, it's a totally new EV platform that they've developed. Um, now, it doesn't say if this is going to go into production. Um, it's uh, They are partnering with Magna on a lot of the components on this. So we'll have to wait and see. It could just be a reference car for their technology. Who knows? But anyway, it got a lot of eyeballs and it's certainly got mine because I'm talking about it here. Um, let's see what happens. Stay tuned and let me know what you think of this in the comments. 
Finally, my last story is just a couple of quick updates from uh, Jaguar, Audi, and Audi, and BMW. Uh, first of all, as the I-Pace got an update from Jaguar, they've they've taken a bit of flack of, of not being as efficient and as being uh, long range as they should be for the type of vehicle and size of battery that they have. So they've uh, put together a no cost package of electronic updates that improve battery usage, aerodynamics, I guess it has to do with the, the self-closing vents and things like that, and the operation of the all-wheel drive system. Uh, they give you, they give, now give for the I-PACE a range boost of 8% or 12 miles or 19 kilometers above the EPA numbers. And uh, future updates will be allowed over the air as well. They turn that on instead of having to go install, uh, go to a Jaguar dealer and install that. So are uh, some over the air updates, excuse me. Um, how they've tweaked th the, some of the systems to get these numbers? Well, they've uh, allowed the battery to run in a lower state of charge than previously without affecting drivability, durability, or performance. And I'm just, I've got paper notes on this one. Uh, folks, um, they've refined the torque distribution between the front and rear motors, which improves efficiency, especially in eco type modes. And they've redefined the thermal management control by using active radiator vane systems more frequently and made small, small tweaks to the regenerative braking system. Um, so great to see that, uh, you know, they've taken the Tesla approach by understanding what their vehicles are capable of um, and being able to implement some of these tweaks to improve uh, range and uh, efficiencies. Now, Audi is doing the same thing, very similar. They've unlocked some more energy that you can suck from on their 95 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, previously, they were only allowing about 83.6 kilowatts that you could actually draw from, but now they've upped that to about three kilowatt hours to 86 and a half. Um, they allow the regenerative braking system to provide more juice back to the battery and the front motor is virtually shut down during many driving conditions. And to me, that sounds like something where, remember some of the some of those V8s that are out there or even V6s and they're on the highway and they shut, shut a couple cylinders off and go to fours for eco type modes when you're just cruising along. I think it's something similar to that from an EV perspective. So what these changes provide, the e-tron is that it can travel about 15 and a half or 25 kilometers more in a single charge. Um, and that should make owners happy. Again, these are all things that uh, part of the benefits of having an EV, folks, is to have these enhancements uh, come from the manufacturer. In probably all of the cases, these are free of charge. I'm not aware of any charges for these. These are enhancements to existing vehicles that the manufacturers can do to keep customers happy and to get more out of it. And that's something very unique to the EV industry without going to third party, right? Modifications and chipping and all this kind of stuff that you can do with ICE cars. Now, lastly, BMW is also um, touting a new energy density in chemistry as well. They're, of course, they're working on their what they call Generation 5 electric powertrain platform for their next generation of EVs, uh, which will include the, uh, the first use of that platform platform will be the iX3 that'll use that powertrain and what they're doing is they are including a motor that uses uh, no rare earth elements uh, to the new NMC 88811 that's a pretty popular chemistry uh, that uses two-thirds less cobalt so obviously there's a movement to get away from some of these rare earth elements and get into more sustainable uh, especially long-term sustainable resources that we can use for batteries and this also gives the benefit of providing 20 percent higher energy density so again i love it when i'm hearing this stuff um, that um, making some of these enhancements and playing with the chemistries of batteries and stuff can actually be very very beneficial so good on bmw and lastly is an update and i believe i might have mentioned this a couple of shows ago but it came out again this week uh, for mercedes-benz announcing that they are confirming that they are going to delay bringing the eqc uh, all electric, their first all electric vehicle, their SUV to America, to the US marketplace, which I believe includes Canada, um, until 2021. So they're going to delay that. Now they're saying that because it's uh, of very high interest and demand for European markets, that they want to focus their uh, initial production runs and deliveries to those marketplaces rather than putting them on boats and shipping them across to North America for, for customers that are looking for them here. Um, I don't know. I, I Some of the numbers I've read, that does seems that they don't have a whole ton of pre-orders for these over there. But again, it's hard to find accurate numbers on a lot of stuff. But if you do have an EQC and you live in uh, United States, if not even Canada, 
Uh, you might want to check with your dealer and just confirm that uh, that you're going to be waiting uh, another year anyway to see these things. And uh, there might be some other choices that come out before, though. But, you know, I hope Mercedes can get their stuff together and get some vehicles out here. All right. And that's it for this episode 75 of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you for tuning in, trying to help educate minds one tailpipe at a time. Appreciate you taking the time to stick with me and watch the show. Thank you, of course, to everybody who uh, comments and subscribes and likes and, and all the YouTube stuff that I get on a regular basis. I really, really appreciate it. And again, I will ask you, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. You don't have to click the bell if you don't want to get reminders, but you can. I promise that I don't uh, spam people and you'll only get probably an email when I push a new show out, and which only is only about once a week. It would be really, really nice if people would subscribe. I've only got about 30% of my viewership subscribing. So I'd love to get my subscriber count out. It's very important for YouTube metrics. So please, if you can help me out, thank you. And for those that have, from my call to action on the last show, I saw a pretty good increase in subscribers relatively quickly. Thank you very much for doing that. And for those sticking around with me, I appreciate it. And of course, always a heartfelt thank to Patreon supporters. Um, it, it, I'm humbled every month uh, when I see the reports come out and I get messages from people. Thank you very much. If you don't know what that is you can check out the information on the patreon page i do this part-time folks this is not a full-time job i don't have corporate sponsorship or anything like that so anything you can do would be helpful um i also want to um mention about fully charged as i just said so it's coming up in three weeks now or about two two and a half weeks february 1st 2nd if you haven't got your tickets yet go out and get them please you can use this discount code for saving 15 percent off the ticket price i will be there i am confirmed i actually have a booth so i'll be uh, based on the exhibitor floor at booth 300 300 so please find me i'll be there for a couple of days if i'm not wandering around or doing interviews and this kind of stuff for, with people and filming some stuff you will find me around that booth please come and say hi tell me your ev story i want to hear these things because i i take this information that you guys and gals tell me uh and i when i'm talking to people that don't know anything about evs and that are interested in how an ev could impact their life i reference not only my personal story and my use case but your stories and your use cases and your experiences they're very very helpful to me being able to propagate this message out and educate and inform people so thank you very much and i hope to see a meet and shake a lot of hands and hear a lot of stories over those couple of days um and lastly i, I did i've been tweeting out over the last uh, week or so that i've opened up a chapter this is for local canadian customers here in ontario i've opened up a chapter of the electric vehicle society ev society for short you can go on their website at www.evsociety.ca check out all the locations uh, i'm starting meetings at the local caledon chapter here where i live in my area which will cover Caledon, Orangeville, Peel, uh, Mississauga, Brampton, uh, Georgetown, anywhere. I mean, you don't. You can come from anywhere. You don't have to live in the area. Please come out to the meeting. You'll, you'll see all the information on the website. So thank you very much. And I believe, looking at my notes, that is it for the show. So again, thank you for sticking with me. Everybody, please have a safe week and uh, take care. Uh, you know, my prayers and, and thoughts go out to some of the tragedies that have happened uh, over over this past week, especially. Um, you know, some of this news may may seem moot compared to that, but you know, life goes on. And we have to continue doing and and uh, talking about the stuff that we feel is important. But certainly, let's remember what's going on in this world and all of our personal thoughts and prayers and uh, comments as we move forward. So again, until the next time, please everybody stay safe. Have a great week, and I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.